When it comes to griefing in Minecraft, how far is considered too far? The reason I ask is that recently, a group of players on the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft, 2B2T, may have actually crossed a line. They've started a massive campaign targeting innocent Minecraft servers, and they've been destroying them without warning. They've programmed a sophisticated bot to automatically search for open servers all over the world, allowing them to identify easy targets. They've created a private database listing more than 50,000 of these small servers. This potentially makes it the largest Minecraft griefing index ever created. You have to understand that most of these servers are not publicly advertised. They're run by families, friend groups, schools, churches, and other organizations. They don't have the same protections that the big servers do, meaning most of these victims were powerless to stop the griefing. Now, the question is, why? Why are these griefers leaving 2B2T to attack innocent players and go on a rampage? It's one thing to grief on anarchy servers where it's expected, but attacking random servers on a global scale is something else entirely. Today, we'll be discussing Project Copenheimer, explaining how it started, why these griefers are targeting smaller servers, and cover the sophisticated methods used in this trolling campaign. While the group claims they're doing it just for fun, I believe there is a deeper reason for them doing this, and it has to do with 2B2T itself, which is why I wanted to make this video. While it's important for servers to keep themselves safe, it's important for you to keep your finances safe. So I'd like to thank Current for sponsoring today's video. In this day and age, keeping track of your finances can be confusing and overcomplicated. With Current, it's as simple as installing an app on your phone and tracking your spending. I've been using my Current card for things like groceries, coffee shops, and even online purchases as well. When you can see how much you're spending, it makes you more aware of your own habits, which I think is fantastic. When you spend and save better, you have more freedom to be who you are. It's simple, easy, and straightforward. So what are you waiting for? To get the ball rolling, head over to current.com slash fitmc. That's current.com slash fitmc. Now then, let's get started. So how did this massive trolling campaign begin? Well, it all started with an organized griefing group named The Fifth Column, who's been active on 2B2T for quite some time now. They've destroyed numerous bases in the past half year. Many of their members would often test griefing exploits on random Minecraft servers. Eventually, griefing these random servers was more enjoyable to them than blowing up bases on 2B. Many of them had grown up watching Team Avolition on YouTube. Ten years ago, they were the most infamous griefing group in Minecraft. Even mentioning Team Avo on servers back then could get you kicked. Inspired by these griefing legends, the group privately began a discussion about the best way to find new servers to grief. What if they started a database listing thousands of vulnerable servers that they could destroy at their leisure? It was an ambitious idea, but that only made it more intriguing for them. Two of the members, Orsind and R. Fresh, would start work on this new campaign. They would call it Project Copenheimer, named after J. Robert Oppenheimer, who in real life was considered the father of the atomic bomb. They began to program a bot that could scan the entire internet for every open Minecraft server, even the ones that were never publicly advertised. How they did it is rather interesting. You see, in the Java edition of Minecraft, when you add a server to your list, it pings it to see if it's online or not. If the server responds, it actually gives you a stack of data, such as if the server is modified in any way, if it's whitelisted, the UUIDs of anyone online, and other useful information. And the thing is, Minecraft servers by default do not record pings in the server logs, which means all this information can be gathered anonymously on a massive scale. Using a single Minecraft account logged in, they would use a client to attempt to ping as many servers as possible. If a server was found, the account would attempt to log in for just one second. In that short time, they were able to see if the server was whitelisted, if it had anti-cheat plugins, 
and the account would also record basic NBT data, such as nearby signs. They streamlined the process so that the account could join and leave different Minecraft servers every second. They connected the bot to their Discord server to start indexing their targets, allowing easy access to the data. Within a few days, they had already recorded thousands of servers. Ones that were considered prime targets had to meet three specific criteria. They had no whitelist, no anti-cheat plugins, or if they did have them, they were not very strict, and the lack of a proper backup system, meaning that if the server was grieved, it would have to be fixed manually. The majority of smaller servers out there usually fall under these categories. While many of the servers the bot found were completely empty, there were some pretty big surprises. SMP servers from different countries such as Japan, private servers run by Twitch admins, family-friendly servers run by schools, and in one case, a church. Innocent servers that had no idea what was about to happen. The rest of the group members were impressed by how easily the bot had identified these targets. Needless to say, it didn't take long for the destruction to begin. They began hitting servers as fast and hard as possible. Using hack clients, they would attempt to cause as much damage as they could in a short amount of time. In a sadistic way, you could consider these attacks Minecraft griefing speedruns. In many cases, all that was needed was a flint and steel to cause chaos. Chests were raided, houses destroyed, works of art blown to smithereens. Anyone online at the same time as the griefers were powerless to stop them. After a few days of this, more optimizations were made to the Copenheimer bot, allowing them to index servers at a faster pace. Pretty soon, their database had grown to tens of thousands of servers, and the group became more ambitious in their targets. They began going after larger SMPs, some that had been around for years, and destroying them without warning. Remember, Earlier, I said the Copenheimer bot was recording sign data while it was briefly logged in. Well, the group put out a statement saying that if servers placed a sign at their spawn, saying the fifth column owns this server, the bot would notify the group and the server would be spared. When griefers are literally pulling an Old Testament, you know things have really gone off the rails. Eventually, their bot had surpassed 50,000 servers pinged and their database had become perhaps the largest griefing index ever made. They had adopted the behavior of their idols, Team Evolution, but on a much larger scale and perhaps more malicious. The fifth column would continue their griefing spree. Server after server was hit, leaving innocent players angry and confused. As we speak, the index grows larger and larger, with the goal being to ping every single Minecraft server in existence. Now at this point in the video, we need to address the elephant in the room. Some of you are probably thinking, well fit, if these griefers are attacking innocent servers, why are you giving them attention? Why even make a video about the Copenheimer project? I think this entire ordeal is a direct result of an underlying issue that 2B2T is currently having. The server itself is in a very strange time right now. You see, a few months ago, every single base was compromised by an exploit called NOCOM. Even though the exploit is no longer active, this news inherently scared many players away. The server regulars that survived griefing attempts either abandoned their bases or have stopped playing entirely. Those that have stayed are currently facing a dilemma. Instead of rebuilding right away, Many are waiting for the server to update so they can finally access the new blocks. But the thing is, the server update is taking far longer than anyone expected. Housemaster, the admin of 2B2T, has put the testing server on the most recent version of Minecraft, the Caves and Cliffs update. While this is promising, it also means a longer wait for the players. It's also the time of year where people are going back to college and regular school, so all of these factors combined have led to player activity being the lowest it's been in quite some time. Since nobody wants to build right now, there's less people playing for the griefers to mess with, so groups like the fifth column are branching out because they're bored. They had to go elsewhere to get their destructive fix. 
I guess it goes to show you how anarchy servers usually act as containment for these types of individuals, to keep them away from the regular Minecraft community. And when they get bored, it becomes a problem for everyone else. While the Copenheimer project has been interesting to document, I do believe they crossed a line attacking innocent servers outside of the anarchy environment. That's my take on it, but what's your opinion? Let me know down in the comments section, and if you found today's video informative, make sure to leave a like and hit that subscribe button. Also follow my socials, so take it easy FitFam, and stay safe out there.